Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This release covers the 1993 re-release and rescue of this vintage 32 Ford street rod kit. It's a 1-8 scale kit from Monogram, number 770088. The 32 Ford, known as the Deuce, was the first to offer an affordable V8 with its classic styling and it's been the favorite of street rotters ever since. Now the kit has nearly 300 pieces molded in blue and white with chrome plated and transparent clear and red parts, soft Goodyear branded tires, cables, metal rods, decals and instructions. And when you're finished, the dimensions are a whopping 20 and a half inches long eight and a half inches high and eight inches wide. Occasionally you'll see a kit come along that catches your eye and you think that'd be a great build but then you're surprised to find they're not asking much for it and you have to wonder what's wrong with it. Well that turns out to be what's called a rescue kit. Without some extra work it would be tossed out by most people but with a little help from 3D printer parts suppliers and some scratch building I was happy with the outcome. The main emphasis here will be to show you some of the problems you're likely to find in a rescue kit and how to correct them. And then after that, I'll provide a review of the major construction needed for the kit. I've always said, if it's a vintage kit, it's worth saving. So follow along and I'll show you how I saved my wild deuce. Oh, um, that's, uh, you hear that tapping? That's, that's, uh, Newt. He, um, he wants to uh, have, a, he's got a question, so we're going to let him come around the glass and, uh, um, so, w w what have you got there, Newt? I like the two colors on this car. They don't paint them like that nowadays. Yeah, that was the style back then, and, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, taste, and I imagine it'll make a comeback someday. So, is this like a car you had when you were younger? Well, hey, how old do you think I am, anyway? Oh, I'd say about 100 or 112, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, hey, uh, let's get on with the rescue. Here are the chrome trees uh, that you'll find in the kit. There's four big trees, and the parts are just gorgeous. Chrome was in good shape. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is inventory the kit. To see if all the parts are there. Next thing to do, then, is to inspect them for poor workmanship or any damage or any manufacturer's defects. Normally, you'll find that some of the parts are missing or damaged in, in what you call a rescue kit, and this was no exception. The frame and fenders were severely cracked and broken, uh, and there were two pieces missing. One of the taillights was gone, and one major body piece was missing. That was the front grille surround, the centerpiece of the whole front end. Now, I found that some of the parts were painted without being primed, and they, they weren't in too bad a shape but they still had blemishes and imperfections and I also found that some of the other pieces had been primed over the top of the paint but needed to be sanded and finished nicely. It was the victim of thick primer and runny yellow paint. So the next thing to do is see if you can source the pieces or replace them through scratch building. Here are the decals for the kit but you won't be needing any setting solution for these. It's just one for the license plate and one for the dash and I think they want you to put the big Ford sticker on the spare tire carrier. But uh, we won't be needing any of that. Uh, and we're going to get uh, some of the uh, decals made um, on the printer uh, for this kit. Now we'll be using, you know, all kinds of adhesives here and there. And we'll try and highlight those as we go along. This is one of the translucent red tail lights. And that's the only one that was in the kit. The other one was missing. So we're going to have to do something about that. The frame had gotten twisted and broken in three different places. Here's the major break and some of the cracks that I found in, uh, when I inspected it. Also note the gas tank has already been added to the frame and it's been uh, assembled. One of the weaknesses of this kit is this connection between the two fender sections. It's just a small thin piece that's actually bent and just about any force at all would break it off. Also missing from the kit was the grill surround, as I mentioned. You can see it here in the red square, and it's, it's a critical piece for the front end. An internet search turned up a supplier, 
In fact, there are several. Um, but you can see here from Maple Leaf Model Works uh, that they make a 3D printed model uh, replacement part. And it appears that that piece was very delicate and broke quite often. So there's uh, several sources to buy uh, replacement parts from. Knowing that I could buy a replacement part through Shapeways uh, enabled me to start looking at the rest of the pieces and repairs. So as you see here, I decided I'd just make uh, tail lights for the kit. So I used the one that came with it and I made some impressions and a little tacky dough and then I filled it with some resin compound to replicate the shape of this uh, translucent part. Uh, so I sanded off the backside flat and uh, added a little tube stock, but you can use um, some sp heavy sprue there to replicate the, um, the round boss there on the backside. And I covered the front side with foil. Foil mounted on a couple of toothpicks. Uh, we'll give these a couple light coats of stoplight red transparent. And then uh, we're going to uh, do a, a fit check here with a dry fit uh, with the bezel so you can see how these are going to work out for two new replacement taillights. Now we'll uh, turn our attention to that broken frame. And you can see here um, the paint's been scraped off that thick primer and a piece of uh, uh, plastic uh, stock or even sprue will work just fine. But after I glued the sections together with some thin um, CA glue, I, um, I placed that into position and then I uh, epoxied the whole area uh, and epoxied the part into place uh, to give that some good strength. Up in the front, uh, you can see the red arrows pointing to the cracks here in the forward section. So I um, uh, glued those with some thin glue, uh, some super glue, and then uh, after that I sanded it off and scratched off the um, primer. And then I added some real thin 10 thousandths uh, sheet stock to the top with some super glue to give that a good bond and uh, strengthen those uh, both sides of that frame. Then I uh, you know, added some putty to finish it off and make it nice and smooth again. The red circle here shows the uh, side that we've already fixed, but um, I've added another uh, piece of plastic on the inside of the frame on the other side to ensure the uh, strength and integrity of the whole frame and keep it straight. And so the lower section here, the arrow, shows the uh, structural piece in place and that gets filled with epoxy and then it'll be painted black so you hardly even notice it. Up top, we're going to smooth off the outside and top of the frame there uh, to give that a nice appearance and, and make that look like new. And so here's a look at the whole frame. Uh, it's got just a very slight amount of warp to it, which I'm going to have to live with and try to correct later. But it's all together now and it's pretty strong. I painted the um, gas tank uh, flat aluminum uh, and a nice uh, smooth coat of that. Uh, to make sure that it would uh, be, of course, uh, <laughs> look like a gas tank when we're done. Then I covered the, um, the tank up with some uh, tape and painted the entire frame with some semi-gloss black. You can see here that some of the pieces were initially painted with uh, a thin yellow paint uh, and no primer. So uh, you can see it pooled up here, gassed out, and left uh, some permanent bubbles in the creases. So... Those all had to be repaired um, by mostly sanding off any of those uh, thick areas and then repriming. Throughout the entire model, you'll probably run into issues like this with exposed pin marks and uh, even some of the pieces with the part numbers printed on the parts. And yes, it's on the underside, but uh, in today's contest world, you can't leave them. So you got to smooth those out, clean them up. And then uh, I gave the entire thing uh, a, another coat of nice light gray primer. As you saw earlier, uh, the two fenders are connected with a very thin ribbon of plastic. And right there at the joint, it's just about 10 thousandths thick where it uh, folds around and connects the two. Now we have to fix that. Uh, so we're going to take and uh, remove uh, some of the uh, paint. And then I taped these into position. Uh, so that I could get some super glue on that joint where the two pieces go together. Once that was done, I cut a paper template around the back side so that I could um, transfer that to some thin 10 thousandths sheet uh, stock and, and glue it all the way around the back side uh, to give that some strength. 
after some test fitting uh, the joint was cleaned up you can see the super glue uh, around it but uh, it's nice and clean and smooth and um, we're going to then apply uh, the uh, plastic uh, sheet stock with some super glue into position uh, to give that um, at least a little bit of strength on this side on the other side of the joint I elected to use some of the sheet stock and epoxy glue it into position and uh, thicken that up pretty nicely so that it had uh, additional strength. As that uh, joint was drying I actually did a, a test fit here of the fenders inside and on the draped around the outside and top where they go into position. You see that tab there with the arrow indicating? That's uh, your locating point. You, you put that tiny tab on the back of the fender uh, just behind that and that's um, that's where your fenders go into position on the frame. Um, some of this portion is visible uh, after the model is built so I elected to uh, putty this entire area smooth it up and, and make it look uh, just like it was when it was original only a little bit thicker as you can see here. Here's a photo of the motor uh, that's uh, in the car on the uh, box art and uh, as you can see the the blue hoses there those are the uh, upper radiator hoses and and the fuel lines are coming in for the opposite side the uh, two uh, v-shape uh, steel rods at the top are your hood rods um, and it looks like the um, original builder was trying to replicate that um, that look but there was a large sink on top of the bell housing there so i decided to fill that in with some putty and clean that up so I glued a toothpick to the transmission hole there uh, and I decided to give it a nice overall coat of primer and painted the engine block and the heads uh, a semi-gloss black to give it a nice contrast to the chrome pieces. I painted the transmission case with some steel color and then I uh, put a little ammo, uh, MIG ammo uh, detailing in there to bring out uh, some of the highlights and make it look like there's a little grime on top of the uh, transmission. Here are most of the pieces that will be applied to the motor um, and you can see the, the separate carburetor pieces for the Strombergs there um, and quite uh, frankly is nicely detailed for uh, a model of this era. So the valve covers have been cleaned up and uh, the breathers caps uh, installed and some uh, red uh, in the uh, ribs there for effect. And so some of the engine parts of course needed to be uh, stripped of their chrome uh, uh, just <laughs> because they look more realistic. Um, but I went ahead and did that. Aside that uh, you know you've got a seam there so you need to clean that up. Uh, and then I painted those semi-gloss black. And so you can use uh, either uh, you know bleach uh, and just um, let them soak in there or in this case there's a little yellow uh, easy off uh, sprayed in there and then cover it up until she's finished. Here the spark plugs um, have been painted uh, aluminum where the, um, the hex is uh, where you thread it on and then the top is left white but it doesn't matter because I covered it with some spark plug boots uh, cut from some of the uh, tubing. Talk about some amazing detail. Uh, this kit goes to great lengths. They even provided a miniature uh, socket and ratchet for you to install the spark plugs with. And so once you've got those spark plugs in place, um, just add a little light super glue, uh, you know, thin liquid here to secure them into place. And then uh, throughout the model, you're going to find that um, there's not real good locating points for gluing uh, a lot of the pieces. And in this case, like the uh, oil filter here, there's a ledge that it's supposed to go on, uh, but it's not really located. So I drilled a little hole uh, in the bottom of that and then added some uh, uh, a tube stock uh, or rod stock to the center of the uh, oil filter, trimmed it off, and used it to locate that into position. The intake plenums are... Uh, here are connected by a piece of the clear vinyl tubing that's included with the kit so just cut that into sections and uh, fit that so that they uh, they fit properly together you can see them here later on I, I painted those uh, uh, hoses uh, bl uh, black a uh, flat black now we can add the uh, plenum up on top the uh, uh, engine there and there's three pieces on the left the uh, radiator hose mounts um, 
and another piece there in front they can go into position and uh, remember scrape off any paint or chrome uh, before you try to glue pieces together or they won't stick now we can work on the carburetors um, the outside shows the air cleaners that the that were painted body color here and then uh, next are the carburetors uh, there's um, six of them and they're assembled in two halves each and then the uh, throttle linkages and, and finally inside uh, the fuel distribution rod there uh, with some of the plastic tubing that is cut to connect uh, that to the carburetors. But by omission, this is a strange, uh, strange thing. There's no fuel pump uh, for the motor, no fuel pump. And so you'll also find that they're confused on the instructions. This first instruction here shows the uh, fuel feed line on the right side of the uh, uh, engine pointing towards the back. And then this next uh, picture and step 13, it's clearly in the front, just dangling there in midair because there's nowhere to put it. So eventually I just glued it there uh, to the block. So here's a mock-up of the assembled carburetor with the air cleaner on it. Uh, just to make sure that the air cleaners all fit properly and were symmetrical. So here the uh, carbs are all setting on the plenums um, and then you add the, uh, the throttle rod there on each side and uh, you're going to want to try and equalize all the uh, pieces uh, so that they're all symmetrical and um, you know spaced properly apart and perpendicular to the uh, uh, motor. Uh, the two black arrows here uh, point out the uh, throttle linkages. Next we'll install uh, the fuel rail there and um, the, the little tubing pieces are used to connect to the carburetors uh, separately. So we're going to put that into position and then you'll see the black arrow here points to the uh, fuel rod and then the little white arrows indicate the uh, tubing that goes across uh, all the way across the top of the engine there to the three carbs on the left side. Now we can add the uh, pulleys to the front end. I left one chrome and the other one is uh, gloss black as well as the um, the alternator there. Um, you know it's got uh, aluminum finned uh, forward section and uh, it's uh, got a cap in the back so assemble that, paint it uh, semi-gloss black and glue that into position there um, on the uh, right side of the motor. Now um, try and align uh, as well as you can the, uh, the two pulleys uh, slots there in the, uh, the front end and then uh, I actually uh, glued a, um, a piece of stock to the back of that uh, uh, black pulley and uh, drilled a hole in the motor to size that uh, forward and backward to make those uh, align properly. I borrowed the uh, AC emblem uh, from uh, internet image made a little decal and sized it up and placed it on the oil filter to give the engine a more finished look. You can see the uh, feed uh, line there for the fuel just dangling in space so uh, the red end of, uh, arrow there will indicate where I glued it into position later. The um, distributor was another item that was chrome and had uh, uh, pretty ugly uh, parting lines etc on it. I cleaned that up uh, and painted it uh, gloss black and the wires are, are cut here and then uh, I'll glue those into the appropriate holes there. They all come out of the front face so they can be added later. So here you see the wires uh, have been super glued into the holes in front and then it is uh, glued to the, uh, the distributor hole in the back of the engine there. Also we're going to add uh, the, um, the front um, fan uh, <laughs> pulley belt uh, there's no fan included with this kit. Um, another omission, uh, strangely, there's no cooling fan. So uh, line that up uh, on the pulleys and put those into position. I will give you a couple of views here of the uh, completed motor. Now, the, it's actually a very nice rendition of the, um, the 421 Pontiac engine that was just absolutely the hottest thing on the market in 61 and 62. Um, so as you see here, it looks pretty good, uh, pretty much all finished and uh, ready to install into the uh, uh, motor mounts. And so here's our old uh, friend, the fenders, um, in uh, nicely detailed and smoothed out uh, <laughs> front uh, connector there. So we're going to take and uh, 
light gray primer, all, all of these uh, fender and um, running board pieces, and then give them a nice coat of uh, gloss black paint. Now we're going to include the rear frame pieces, and this is the top side of the fenders, uh, and also the um, uh, the uh, running boards there, but they'll still be painted uh, a medium gloss black. Uh, but the fenders themselves, they're going to be painted a, uh, a metallic charcoal color. This is Tester's uh, Extreme Lacquer. It's um, the uh, 1832 Blazing Black, and... Uh, with the uh, metallic uh, flake in it, it gave it kind of a grayish um, tint so that it wasn't pure black, uh, but I thought it would complement the uh, uh, other color on the body. As I mentioned, there's another color on the body, and um, I find that it's uh, kind of helpful to scribe your line uh, if you're going to do a two-tone two paint um, so that you can get a nice clear cut um, uh, of the uh, tape, your masking tape, uh, after that's all uh, painted again. So with the body all cleaned up and sanded off nicely to my taste, uh, and these uh, panel lines rescribed, I gave it a, a coat of dark gray. After the primer had dried, I sanded it out again, and then I sprayed the uh, body with um, the 1246 gloss metallic silver uh, testers paint. Uh, to give it a nice um, undershine. After that was dried, I followed up with a, a couple of light coats of 1631 gloss uh, uh, custom purple metallic flake. Uh, it's a really nice color. If you don't put it on too thick, it's got a real nice uh, sheen to it. Now we'll use that deep scribe and uh, mask this off by cutting the tape there at the um, uh, belt line or the body line there and then uh, masking the entire thing off and painting the top section with that blazing black uh, metallic and as you can see it almost has a, a silver glow to it so it doesn't really look dark black it kind of looks like a charcoal. After a, a few days of drying time I uh, removed the tape uh, and uh, the masking and as you can see she came out pretty nice and clean right towards the back end it's shiny there but um, uh, that's just a reflection but she came out really well you're gonna see uh, uh, <laughs> things that need to be uh, repaired or fixed uh, if this is going to be a contest model for you um, as you can see the white circles there indicate uh, you know there's there's holes in the bottom of the hood uh, where the trim line goes on top of it and uh, there's some uh, pin marks there that need to be filled but we're going to get that all cleaned up and those notches by the way are I didn't know but they are relief areas so that the exhaust um, uh, manifolds don't run into the hood um, after you get the engine in place we'll use the same steps for the hood as we did the body uh, it's painted uh, after it's all cleaned up uh, with some silver and then uh, sprayed um, uh, purple on the on the side curtains there and then the uh, top gets the uh, blazing black treatment so removing the tape and the masking uh, you've got a, a pretty nicely looking um, a hood there it's painted similarly on the inside as well well moving forward so to speak uh, towards the front of the car we're going to work on that grill surround and that area marked there with the oblique uh, red lines that needs to be removed for the grill that goes into this model. I think it was patterned after a different uh, version of the model kit. Um, but we're going to remove that. I used a small coping type of saw and um, I removed most of that uh, section so that we could fit the grill in and you see it mocked up here uh, so that we know that it, uh, it will fit perfectly into position. So with the grill taped in uh, uh, precise alignment, I added these uh, plastic pieces and I taped those into position and then I super glued them uh, to the sides uh, and the bottom there of the surround so that uh, I know that I had a great uh, surface uh, to fit the grill and glue it into position. And here we're going to start to clean up um, you know what's uh, roughness uh, of the outside of the 3D printed grill surround and it's starting to look really nice now. We smoothed it all up and cleaned it all up. 
So here are those uh, support pieces that we're going to glue the grill to. We'll use some uh, gel type super glue and glue those into position. And now I'm uh, adding some uh, the MIG dark wash here to the recesses of the radiator to give that some definition. And then uh, we'll move along here. We're going to assemble uh, most of these pieces um, into position. Once again, uh, the grill gets glued to those um, pieces that we added to the middle of this surround. So after the surround was all um, cleaned up and smoothed out, we painted that uh, with the gloss purple. Uh, and then uh, we're going to tape off the um, uh, area there where the very top of this I painted with the, uh, with the black. Uh, uh, so as to continue that black line all the way down. So you can see here uh, that the grill uh, is test fitted into the surround and uh, it's the two-tone uh, black and purple that we're after. So after everything's painted and dried uh, we've got the major pieces of the model all ready to uh, assemble later on. So we're just going to let that set while we work on uh, some of the rest of the model. These are the door hinges and this model was um, meant so that you could if you wanted to uh, open up the doors and have those uh, operational as well as the uh, trunk which I opted to, for neither. So I'm going to cut the uh, hinges off here and remount them. So I use some super glue to glue the hinge uh, pairs together and then I'm going to cut them off and then remount them on a piece of uh, plastic sheet and uh, install them from the back side later on. Now note that the um, the lower hinge is just a little longer than the upper hinge but as it was uh, configured from the uh, manufacturer there I thought they were a little too long. Uh, so here you see them cut off, painted, and modified to uh, fit my uh, non-functional doors. Now we're going to take a little side trip here and work on the um, uh, spare tire cover. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to make my own decals, uh, and you see those on the right side here. The big round one uh, will go on the on the cover here. So we're going to clean that up. It had a few uh, sink marks in it, and get that ready for paint. After it was primed and dried, uh, I painted it with the uh, purple metallic, and uh, then we're going to tape off the outer rim of the uh, uh, cover and we're going to uh, sp uh, spray that uh, portion of it uh, white. And so here's our two-tone wheel cover, uh, spare tire cover, and we're going to use one of the uh, decals here, two if we need <laughs> a spare. And uh, with a decal this big it goes on a flat surface so you really just need to be careful and kind of uh, wipe it off so uh, smoothly so that it uh, goes into position without any bubbles in it. Now we can gather up the pieces for the front suspension and uh, you'll note that the back side of the spring has no detail. So I filled that in with some, uh, some putty, um, in this case uh, a, a two-part putty, uh, milliput, and uh, we're going to then detail that with some lines on it to give it a spring look like appearance. Uh, uh, and then. Uh, You'll see here there's little nubs uh, that you attach your brake lines to as well. Now also one of the uh, lower uh, connecting arms have been installed there into the brake plate. Here the parts have been cleaned up and uh, some of the sections of course uh, you see there painted uh, uh, semi-gloss black. And uh, that leaves the portions that need to be glued uh, without any paint on them so I get good adhesion. Here's an assembly of uh, one of the uh, uh, wheels uh, backs with the, um, the steering arm on it and you can see how that goes together. Uh, it's topped by the cap there on the upper arm um, and uh, those kingpins are trapped into position. And um, here it is with uh, most of the assembly of that portion of the front end. Uh, now note that the um, the wheel backs and the steering arms there are going to move. They, they are articulating. And now you can see the blue cap there on the end of the tie rod uh, which is protruding through its white there at the tip. Now I just used a heated blade and, and heated that uh, and flared that over so that uh, it kept that into position and, and then painted it later with a little black. I used some epoxy glue to uh, attach that uh, tabs to the frame there and as you can see we still have a good articulating motion.
Now we're going to locate the um, the master cylinder, the brake cylinder here, and glue that uh, to the frame, uh, the mid, the cross section, and then uh, that gets clamped into place. Well. Uh, the uh, little tube there, the brake line goes to the frame on the other side. And now we can add the uh, shock absorbers. I painted those red and uh, the trailing arms there. You can see how those are mounted onto the frame. And, and uh, finish that up with some semi-gloss black uh, uh, by hand. Uh, you can just brush the uh, paint that and get that uh, finished now. Get the uh, pieces out here for the uh, rear suspension. And uh, that's a nice uh, quick change rear end. Uh, in the style of the Halibrands, but um, I left that chrome to give it a nice contrast for the uh, dark uh, underbody. Um, and it's up to you. You can finish it off nicely, uh, you know, if you uh, just remove that, clean up the seam, and paint it black. But I left mine chrome just for uh, show. Uh, now we're going to take and assemble the uh, axle rod here. That's that long rod in the kit. And uh, make sure that you uh, clean off and sand off the uh, edges uh, that you're going to glue together. So we've got the uh, axle halves glued together here and uh, kind of cleaned up the seams. And you see that red tab up the top inside the uh, quick change rear end. That uh, fits into the notch there and that's the positive stop. So you're going to put both halves together on those stops and then uh, glue the uh, halves of the uh, quick change rear end and the, and the drive shaft tunnel there together and I taped them uh, and put a rubber band on them so they would glue prop, uh, dry properly. The rear spring needs a lot of cleanup. It's got sink marks on it. You can see they're patched there and a big center line parting line. Also the front end uh, the, uh, towards the front of the spring is hollow so I used some of uh, that two part milliput filled that in and again gave it uh, some of the uh, lines to uh, simulate um, spring leaves. So now we'll add these big uh, trailing arms or torsion bars <laughs> and uh, we're going to tape those down to the mounting points and then there's a little uh, uh, a clevis up there that it mounts to uh, on the drive shaft tunnel. So go ahead and glue that into position. Once all the structural parts were dry I, uh, I hand painted the rest of the axle and the spring portion there with some gloss black. I added these two pieces of tubing stock uh, the smaller one on the uh, drive shaft and fits into the larger one on the engine uh, and that uh, gave me a good um, locating point for making sure that the pieces were lined up after they were uh, put into the uh, middle cross member. Here's where the, um, the back end kind of comes together. Uh, the long tube there of course the axle and that is held in place uh, uh, and with some clips. Uh, also there's some brass bushings there uh, for rotation uh, of the wheel and you're going to insert that um, axle through there and then through the outer or the inside uh, wheels there and then you're going to um, put the brass bushings in place uh, of course and then when you put the outer wheels on then you uh, use those clips to clip uh, a little slot on the uh, axle to keep them in place. Now you can put the first clip into place uh, before you you know assemble the whole thing but trying to get that uh, axle through there and get that other clip on was impossible so I trimmed off a piece of uh, tubing that just fit over the axle shaft and super glued it into place uh, on the other end. And so here's my um, uh, little stub shafts here to fit into each other to align it. Now I had to actually trim some of that off. Uh, it was a little too long. So you'll have to eye that up and make sure that it works for your uh, frame. And here the um, uh, shock absorbers and the outer hubs are put into position uh, uh, on the wheels. See the shocks are staggered there in place there and attached to the rear axle. And uh, those uh, outer wheel hubs, uh, th they're they're not seen so I just left them plain. So here you see we've got the uh, completed working suspension in place. The front end is uh, still articulates and uh, the rear end is static but uh, the wheels all turn. Uh, they're all retained uh, so you can have a rolling uh, model if you like. Pieces here on the left are your uh, steering unit uh, with the uh, gear uh, box and the uh, steering shaft and on the right are um, are some of the uh, 
uh, items that are used for steering the wheels. Uh, that small fork there is what's attached to one of the wheels to turn, uh, actually uh, turn the wheel. And now look at this detail. You got a worm gear inside this box and a little spur gear on the other end. Uh, and that's what uh, is used to use the steering wheel and shaft to turn the steering uh, mechanism. So here's that uh, fork that's used to turn one of the wheels. It's attached there on two tiny little points. I use some epoxy glue to keep that in place. And then there's the uh, drive uh, linkage that uh, actually rotates off of the uh, uh, steering gear. With the uh, linkage attached to that little uh, steering fork, you're going to tape that up uh, on the frame. You see the tape there. And just to keep that out of the way for a while. And now you see the white arrow here is pointing at the uh, gearbox. The outside of that gets glued to the frame, uh, but don't get glue on the shaft that goes through. And then uh, you see here on the other side of the frame, after you release the uh, tape from the parts you tape to the frame, you're going to add the um, uh, connector there uh, from the steering uh, to that uh, so that the drive shaft actually will make that uh, motion and turn that connection there. Uh, on the outside, you just uh, glue it to the end uh, so that uh, you know you don't uh, mess up uh, that throughput, uh, and so it still turns. So you turn, rotate your steering shaft there uh, and your wheel uh, steering column, and, and make sure that doesn't set up. And now we're going to work on the uh, engine mount and the exhaust. Uh, we have to use the standard exhaust coming off of this engine uh, because we've got fenders on the car. Now you're looking here at uh, the red arrow, which is pointing at that little nub I put on the, uh, the uh, drive shaft tunnel. And then also the white arrow indicates the motor mount. Uh, on the bottom of the motor is a slot that goes right into that uh, little slot on the, under, on the top side of the frame. Now scrape off the paint and the chrome uh, from the appropriate um, exhaust uh, flanges there and glue those into position on the motor. Well, you'll notice a little irregularity here. Uh, the exhaust flanges, of course, are staggered. One's a little further ahead uh, because of the piston arrangement. And uh, so then, then the exhaust pipes uh, normally would be um, extended on one side to make up the difference, but they're not. So glue the engine into position with some epoxy glue on that motor mount and line up your, uh, um, your drive shaft, your transmission. And then uh, also notice here that, that the, uh, you know, the exhaust is a little extended on the lower one there than on top. It's a little further out. With the drivetrain uh, complete now, we're going to work on the uh, floorboard. Uh, and you can see there's the pedals and uh, the uh, pedal shafts uh, that will go into place there. And now you can see uh, some script work on the bottom of the uh, floorboards. Um, and there's also sink marks there monogram logo and for some reason they removed the copyright date but anyway you'll want to trim those off and uh, smooth them out if you if you want to uh, get a nice look first thing I did here was paint the uh, floor mats uh, with body color purple I masked off the uh, floor mats and painted the rest of the floor flat black the uh, floor pedals were painted flat black and uh, the except for the uh, gas pedal there that's kind of a moony look and uh, that was uh, painted aluminum and then highlighted with a little black wash. Next I added some of uh, the smaller uh, wild deuce emblems and then we're going to glue the uh, pedals into position on the floorboard. Okay next thing to do is to uh, mask off the, uh, the flat black portion there in the middle and then we're going to paint that forward section uh, of the floorboards uh, the wood color. It's got wood grain on it uh, that's embossed into the part. And as you can see here, uh, it's got a nice wood tone and there's some uh, areas there uh, scraped away uh, for attachment points for the frame. So the hinges are dried and staged up here and we're going to insert those from the backside with some gel type super glue to keep them into place. So here's a look at those hinges after they're installed. Um, and the lower one got a little scuffed up, so we'll have to touch that up later. But you can also see that it's a little bit longer than the upper hinge. Uh, and that's required for the curve of the door. These pieces you'll need for the dashboard. And we're going to cut the um, 
dashboard gauge, uh, the IP section there out, uh, cut on the dotted line, and we're going to glue that with some white glue to the back side of the dashboard. Uh, and the dashboard's painted gloss black, uh, and we're going to um, put the um, uh, um, bracket there for the uh, mask jacket uh, on the underside on the back of the um, of the dashboard and you can see it here in place along with the gauge panel and the uh, the diamond plate over the gauge bezels uh, area too. The uh, firewall um, that's the blue part on the bottom and then uh, what looks kind of like a boiler plate uh, but it's um, more or less supposed to be like a chrome plated uh, piece uh, that goes on that panel uh, up above on the top side. Now I elected to just print out uh, some gauges and uh, put those uh, behind these portholes um, to make this uh, kind of like a, uh, a hot rider would have had tune-up gauges so he could tune the engine area and see the gauge work uh, from the engine bay itself. If you decide to open your trunk there's a piece of upholstery that goes uh, on the top of the trunk and that's uh, the tufted stuff there. I didn't paint it of course because I'm not going to use it but that's where it would go. Now we're going to um, fit the door panels and then glue the uh, trunk uh, shell into place. Um, I, I looked like there were some rub uh, bars or dots on the gas tank so I, I'm thinking that it may be needed for positioning. So I'm going to put that in and then we're going to um, fit those door panels. Um, they need to be squared up to the edge of the top there and also at the bottom and we're going to sand the bottoms off a little bit uh, to make sure we get a good fit of the floor uh, up into that area so we can glue it in place. So I finished off the interior parts, the upholstery etc and you can see it's uh, flat white around the borders with uh, a flat black uh, carpet at the base of the uh, side panels and uh, the uh, upholstery on the front of the uh, firewall has been uh, painted uh, with the purple. Also notice there's a reflective uh, uh, you know, factor there and that was provided by uh, the Rust-Oleum Reflective Finish Paint and that is 214944. Uh, it's a reflective paint. It's kind of like clear uh, metallic flake um, with an iridescent shine to it so give a little pizzazz to the upholstery. So next uh, I installed the, uh, the trunk area there uh, for fit and also I used some gel type super glue to uh, uh, push all of the uh, door panels into place there. You can see them all lined up uh, and um, I, if you need to trim them yet uh, then you have to do that. That lower one in the back there seems to be a little low so I had to actually uh, send some of that off um, and put it back in place. And then uh, I found after I had installed the firewall that the uh, the body was had a little bit of a warp to it, uh, and this uh, uh, precipitated having to sand off the inner side, the edge there, and then glue that into place with some thin super glue uh, to get that to conform to the firewall shape. So look for all your contact points where the floor, um, you know, rides against the side walls of the body there, etc. And scrape the paint off and then use, I used some super glue for this to uh, tack it into position and then a little epoxy, epoxy around the uh, edges and, and uh, miters to make sure that it stayed into place. You can see that the, uh, the body is uh, attached to the floorboards now and uh, in the back end there's a little notch in the fender well and uh, there's a tab on the floor and that's what actually locates your floor uh, to the body. The seat was painted flat white um, just like the door panel edges and then uh, the inserts masked off and painted purple and uh, had the reflective uh, quality applied to those and the uh, side frame was um, left open that's painted uh, with a gloss black. Now the seat glues to just the edges of the uh, footwell there on the sides and in the front uh, so scrape those off and use some super glue to glue the seat into place and you can see the reflective quality uh, of that to reflective paint here uh, and it makes it pretty nice it's not as pronounced without a, a flash on it of course so it looks pretty good in, in uh, real uh, light. And now we'll fit the body and floorboard unit to the frame. Uh, and this is a little different than the instructions. 
so you'll have to just pay attention to where it loops over uh, the um, the frame and sits on rests on it there's two places to glue it but look for your glue points and glue it into position and to locate it you're going to use uh, the the front uh, of the floorboard there where the um, stick shift uh, the gear shift sticks through there and that hole is kind of where you would locate this thing into position and if you need to adjust that by making it a little longer uh, you, you'll have to route that out with a with a rat tail file or something I realized that I'd be turning this thing over to do some work on the underside so I uncoupled the uh, steering shaft uh, the column there and then uh, I decided then uh, I might as well put the steering wheel together now uh, so that all went together and as you can see it fits really nicely it's nicely detailed um, with uh, you know three hole spokes and so glue that into position with some super glue and I painted the rim uh, gloss black color but you'll have to clean it up a little bit it's got some uh, you know some of the wolfies uh, that came with the old kits so here's the uh, column and the uh, steering wheel made it together and we'll reinsert those and glue the tip later on. I elected to make the um, hood and the grill surround all one unit. So I glued those uh, together right on the face there. You, I put the grill surround with some super glue. And uh, normally, of course, uh, that uh, whole surround would stay with the car when you open the hood. But uh, for... Um, the uh, sake of uh, a good streamlined look and fit I decided to put them together well another quirk here I didn't want to use the spinner hubs uh, and the two bladed uh, spinners that go together uh, so I decided to and and as you can see here um, the non spinner uh, blade hubs and two of them are chrome and two of them were white clear plastic or white plastic and I, I don't know why they elected to do it that way uh, but I didn't want to use those, so I just went with the um, the hubs that go with the spinners, and I just didn't put the spinners on. And so after those little diversions, um, I decided to work on start work on the lower section here. The exhaust uh, mufflers uh, are glued together, and uh, I stripped those of the chrome, and then smoothed them all out, and then repainted those with uh, uh, aluminum paint. So now we'll stage up the uh, long exhaust pipes and the uh, mufflers. Um, they've got locating tabs that are pretty nice. But we notice again that little problem with the short exhaust. Now as you notice the exhaust uh, mufflers are, are pinned into place. They are static and they're right across from each other. So I decided to uh, cut off the nub here for the long exhaust pipe and extend it with a little sprue. And uh, those um, exhaust uh, long ones have little tabs on them that glue into the, these little holes marked by the white arrows on the axle. Also little white spots on top. I added a little glue there to keep them in position. You can see here uh, the little added length that I uh, put onto the exhaust pipe. And that will help me get that inserted into the uh, mufflers. And so I used a little tube glue to... Uh, uh, set the mufflers and the exhaust pipes into place so that I could make sure that as they dried uh, along with the exhaust tips uh, that I uh, uh, painted with a chrome pen and, and uh, so that they all were in alignment and looked exactly symmetrical coming out the back end and ver um, through the vertical there uh, of the uh, car. Now we can work on assembling uh, the wheel assemblies along with the uh, branded tires and uh, the nicely chromed uh, wheels. We'll also be adding the spinner hubs uh, later on when we get them in place. Here's another example of some excellent detail. The, um, the air valves, uh, the tire valves are separate. They are uh, glued in from the back side of the outer uh, rim here. So uh, they look very realistic. The uh, branding on the tires uh, for the large Goodyear logos were big enough and uh, pronounced enough that all I did was paint the tops of them and uh, they turned out very nice. After the uh, script is dry you just glue the uh, wheels uh, onto the inner uh, unpainted hubs that we had placed on the outside uh, of the inner wheels there earlier and uh, those go into position nicely. So now we'll be getting out these uh, pieces for the next stage of assembly, those tail lights there uh, and also we're going to put the uh, spare tire carrier on along with the um, spare tire cover 
and the uh, pieces for the uh, frame there, the end pieces. The spare tire cover is actually quite heavy and um, there is a ratchet uh, detent for the, um, the bracket that holds that but I wanted to make sure that it didn't spread out of the frame and fall out so I uh, drilled a couple of uh, small holes through the frame and right straight into the, um, the bracket there that holds that uh, tire cover up and then I'm going to uh, glue a piece of uh, little um, uh, styrene into right into the hole and then I'll trim it off on the outside and then cover it up uh, later on with the end cap caps there. Well, let's add the bumper and the tailpiece there to the frame and uh, the top of that uh, uh, tailpiece there kind of sits on top of the frame and then there's a notch where the bumper bracket protrudes through so it kind of comes and sits on that edge uh, at an angle. So first we're going to uh, glue the brackets on, on uh, or the, uh, the pieces on there to the frame and then we're going to glue the bumper brackets on to that. There's a couple of notches that the um, bumper brackets uh, fit up to on the inside of the rear bumper there and uh, scrape off some of the plating so that you can get a good uh, a good adhesion and glue those um, pieces to the frame and then the bumper brackets to that and then finally you're going to put the bumper into place and glue that uh, securely and use some tape to keep that in position. Glue the um, the back side of the tire spare tire cover onto the bracket, uh, and there's three notches there, so that will fit uh, just one way. So glue that into position uh, with some super glue, and then we're going to use uh, a little bit of light uh, tack uh, super glue to locate the top cover there, the outside with the the decal on it, and and you can rotate that into position uh, so that it's perfectly aligned and let that dry. Uh, we'll add the uh, fenders and the running boards. There's a notch on the a little tab there on the inside of the fender wells and uh, fenders, and you can uh, locate those into a little uh, hole on the uh, body, and then uh, they fit right along that ridge there, so you can scrape a little bit uh, of the paint off and and glue those into position, uh, and then we're going to drop the uh, 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 sideboards there into place, the running boards, and uh, they they essentially just fit um, to the, the the front and the back there onto the fenders and then up against uh, the frame area, so they are pretty secure. Just use some super glue to put those in position. Uh, locate these pieces from the kit, and uh, we're going to glue the. Um, the little nubs there, the uh, those are used to locate the water hoses, the uppers, and then there's um, the cap uh, and uh, fill area uh, that uh, in the center at the top, and glue those into position. And I painted the um, the fill area black there and left the cap chrome. Uh, and then we're going to uh, stage that after that's dry with the hood rods and the upper radiator hoses, etc. And we'll put those into position uh, in just a second. But first, take a look at this um, wire that they give you for the radiator hose. Uh, I basically split it right down uh, one edge, uh, extracted the wire, and then kind of glued it back together around the um, uh, mounts for the radiator hoses when it was right all in place. So then go ahead and mount the uh, radiator into the little slots in the frame there where it um, you know fits uh, and glue those into position with some slow glue. Now I taped it there um, with the uh, hood rods in place to make sure that it fit perfectly. I also bent the hood rods a little bit at the end uh, where they insert into the radiator uh, for that angle. I went ahead now and uh, I painted the spreader bar for the front of the frame black, uh, semi-gloss black, and uh, glued that into position. As that was drying, I um, taped the uh, bumper brackets to the front bumper into the notches where they go, just like in the back bumper. And then I glued uh, those brackets onto the uh, frame area where, where they go uh, so that I got perfect alignment. I could look at uh, the bumper and make sure it was absolutely uh, parallel with the um, plane of the tires uh, where they touch the ground and uh, after that I removed the tape and then glued the uh, bumpers onto those brackets uh, already on the frame uh, so that we got good alignment that way. Locate these pieces, um, uh, these are trim pieces etc for the, um, uh, the hood 
and also the um, uh, filler uh, cap area there and so we're going to stage those and you'll find that there's there's almost no part of this model that doesn't have some kind of flaw or <laughs> defect that needs to be fixed you see sink holes here in the bottom one and a big parting line on these tiny little hood latches uh, so those will be all uh, cleaned up uh, and added uh, some putty to fill the sink holes and then we'll re-finish uh, those with the chrome pen so that we can put them into place and they they just glue into position uh, up on top there the radiator fill cap goes on that uh, little uh, bracket and also there's a little emblem up front there I just left that chrome so here's the view from the other side you see uh, the chrome centerpiece for the hood hinge is up uh, on top too and uh, little brackets and handles on the hood curtains with the grill in place. The horn and the headlights are next. The back section and the bracket of the horn got uh, the gloss black paint and the front section was uh, uh, finished with the uh, Molotov chrome pen. There's a slot there on the uh, left front fender so go ahead and glue the horn into position just make sure that uh, it stays uh, in good alignment. There's a, a lot of chrome in this uh, group, so scrape it off where you glue the parts together. Now the black arrow there indicates where that tab on the uh, uh, ba the bracket, uh, you know, for the headlights, it goes into the back center of the uh, rear portion of the headlamp nacelle, and you glue that into position, in, and uh, the the base of it uh, slides into the C slot there. Also note that uh, there's a there's a hole in the back there that looks like it could be used to feed a wire through there perhaps uh, to illuminate the headlamp uh, if you could get a grain a bulb in you know on the other side of the reflector. So after you glue the uh, reflectors to the um, uh, nacelles there you can use a little white glue and just uh, glue the headlamps into position and pay attention to the vertical lines and horizontal lines on the uh, headlight lens make sure that they're, sure that they're you know uh, proper up and down and uh, also you've got a V8 emblem uh, to uh, go into the center of the uh, mount the crossbar there and uh, some brackets that are used to clamp the uh, uh, headlight uh, crossbar into position and they go on the fenders uh, around the bracket uh, that extends into that. Get the pieces out for the windshield now and um, the brackets that uh, you see the black ones you paint those gloss black and they are glued into some notches on the uh, sides of the body there just in uh, front of the windshield area and uh, this is meant to be an articulated part um, and there's you'll see later a gap at the base uh, of the windshield so that you could actually uh, turn that down and back up into position uh, if you were going to remove the top and then show it in uh, as kind of like a convertible open convertible um, but uh, you can see the red uh, through the space there at the base um, that's actually meant to be there although on the real car of course I think there's probably a, a nice rubber gasket in there that uh, would seal that off but I just glued mine together. I glued the um, uprights uh, uh, to the frame and then I glued those to the um, brackets um, on each side one at a time and then uh, installed the window into the back side with some white glue. Along with the wiper motor we've still got some pieces left to um, add to the vehicle uh, and you can see the side windows there. Um, there's no place to mount those on the uh, windshield bracket. There, there's two tiny tabs there about half a millimeter in diameter uh, and you'd have to drill your holes uh, to mount this thing but mine had a big scratch in it anyway so I left them off just like the guy that did the box art for this kit. I had to do a little work on the uh, door handles. Um, you see the blue uh, handle latches these go on the inside of the car um, on the back side if you have an opening door but I didn't use those so instead of having something to put them in I actually had to add a little uh, um, a tube stock to the outside of that handle and then glue them into position uh, in the in the door holes. The wiper box came chrome uh, but I stripped it and painted it gloss black and mounted it on the back side uh, over the top of the driver's area on the windshield uh, frame and then I taped the um, wiper into position and let that dry on the outside of the frame 
Also note that there's some other pieces there, uh, like the um, uh, extra uh, lights on the side wall uh, of the fenders that um, were glued into position, and uh, those are a nice touch. Those uh, side um, uh, lamps there, they, they, they're they nice, but uh, they're, they don't mount very easily. So I added some uh, posts to the bottom of those and drilled a hole in the body to accept them. And they go together with a lens just uh, like the headlights with some clear glass uh, or some clear white glue, something of that order. You can also mount the rear view mirror now. Uh, and it's just one little tiny tab on the side of the um, uh, windshield frame there. Uh, on the inside here, your um, your up top is going to um, rest on some horns that are on the top and ends of the windshield brackets. And then in the back, uh, there's a little uh, hook, a nook there, uh, that um, you see the black arrow um, just be by the seat. Uh, and, and they just fit into that. There's a couple of uh, little flanges on the, on the convertible top um, bracket that fit right on that. The uh, convertible top frame that's four pieces and it only goes together one way but it's a little tricky um, look for locating notches and you can see how the uh, side units um, attach together here and bring the whole thing together so I uh, glued that uh, those items together and taped them into position uh, to make sure that they uh, glued properly and flat and uh, we're in a good uh, shape. The uh, convertible frame got painted uh, semi-gloss black and there's a little tab up in the center near that uh, that fits in just underneath the window there. So that locates the thing in position and you just, just scrape off the glue or paint there and glue that into place uh, and then uh, it attaches to the front there at the sides of the top uh, and so glue that all together and let that dry. So this uh, convertible top comes with a clear glass window and uh, I just used uh, some foil to um, uh, go around the frame there to give it a little class. And so once that's um, all uh, done, you can glue it into the body with a little white glue and it snaps right in so uh, it, it should be a good fit and put that in position now. Uh, I had forgotten to mention that the one little portion that's articulated on that windshield frame, uh, I did glue, but I didn't glue it until now. And that's so that I could make sure that the uh, top fit in uh, to the little notches there on the uh, top of it and uh, the, the ones in the back at the body perfectly. And then I taped it all up and let it dry. Every street rod needs a license plate, so um, I scraped the chrome and smoothed off the back side and painted that gloss black. And then I mounted it to the rear bumper, which is uh, where it uh, shows uh, it being placed in the instructions. And then I added my plate to it so that I am street legal. Well, there you have it. This spectacular model, saved from oblivion, with a few spare parts from the aftermarket and a little extra work, and it turned out spectacularly. It's a beautiful rendition of the old 32 street rod. And it's not just a, uh, a, going to occupy a place on your shelf. It's going to take a whole shelf. You see it here with another 125 scale B, B model car. That was essentially the same size. But look at how huge it is. Uh, and it really gets some attention. Uh, it's got a great look to it. And a uh, classy little um, uh, paint job there, along with the white top, um, gives it a real nice look. You'd be proud to drive this down the road. But um, the lesson here is, don't be afraid. Uh, if you find, you know, a kit that's worth saving, to dive into it and see if you can do that. And, and you'd be surprised sometime with a little extra work and ingenuity, you can make it work. And here it is in all of its splendor uh, with articulated steering and um, uh, up and uh, down top. Uh, so it's it's got a real nice look to it. So if I were you, I'd find one and save it for my shelf.